Hi everybody, I am Drawing Chaos, and we're back to Satisfactory. Don't you love that pause? Just gotta emphasize what's going on. Ooh. So, welcome. Uh, this is my video on trains. I don't really do many train videos, so I don't really know everything about trains. But I did build a nice train network around my world. And I thought I'd show you guys a little tips, tricks, stuff like that. All that kind of cool stuff. So I made a nice little train spiral over here. And I'll go in later in the video on how that's done. But the general idea is I want to show you guys how I built my entire train network around the world. So that you too can make your own, well, if you want to. So to start things off, I am going to build the Blueprint Designer because, trust me, you want to use blueprints for this. It is a hefty task to do otherwise. Oh, come on. Where's a good spot? This looks, this looks like flat. There we go. So you build yourself a Blueprint Designer and then we're going to create... Where is it? I actually put these all under trains. Train Track Straight Line. Now, I did have a previous one. Which one was it? Now, I did have a basic design such as this one right here that I was using before in my power plant. Uh, the general idea is you just want a flat surface up at the top and it's going to be three foundations wide. The rest of it you can design however you want. Like, let's say you don't like this and you want to go with a more... Uh, whew, not the pillar. All right, so something like this. This was the original one that I did. I thought it was going to be fancy because I incorporated hypertube wall holes in there. And let's turn on that. We can get rid of this. And then you can see I literally <laughs> went through. I had, oh, come on, delete the wrong thing. Yeah, I had it all connected. I had lights on the side because this was going to go above like um, a place where you can just drive cars, like a road. So this was going on top of a road, and you can have it in there, and it looked pretty cool. You know, it even had my a trademark, whatever you want to call this, power line where you can have five different points. Actually, more if you think about it with having these in the center. But these were just put there so that we could have the lights going across. But this was the simplistic design that I had. And I went even simpler by doing another one. And if we load that one up, let's go train track straight. There we go. This is the one that I ended up going with. Now, it's similar to the other one. And actually, it's similar to both of them. Where it's just three foundations wide. I put a nice pillar in the center to hold it up and I kind of put these right here, the small concrete pillars because the train line, if I go to transportations, where is it? So the train line actually fits in here perfectly, like just perfectly. So I had these edges on here, but unfortunately if we get rid of this, you can see that it kind of sticks through or uh, sometimes it's, it's not so nice. Maybe we'll see it on the other side. Yeah, it'll have something like that. So that is why I ended up putting just some squares on there and just kind of, you know, doing that. Also, before we get underway, uh, these are connected to this one in terms of power. And then this is just on here in case I wanted power lines going through. But you don't really need them. I kind of wanted to put them in there as extra, but, you know, either way, with or without looks fantastic. So, step number one, how do we figure out exactly what to do? Easiest way is I started putting foundations out there. Just one foundation going across. And this is why I made the blueprint. Let's say I want to curve it. Well, I can just, you know, hold control and then I can just curve it going every which way I want, which is great. But if I'm going to build these, I'm going to build one down and then I'm going to delete ten of them. Boom. And then I'm going to go and I put it in my hotbar to make it nice and easy. As you can see, Having this foundation worked really well for the one I have. So if you build a, a different blueprint, you know, a different foundation might work better for you. But this one works pretty great. And then all I have to do is just have it go right here. And then I can take this and I can bring the railway over. Bring other railway over and boom, ready to go. 
Now, unfortunately, this does leave us with some floating platforms. And, you know, those aren't good. So, once you have everything that you need, and we can start deleting this going across there. I made it so that I can, you know, only select one type of item, which is this one right here. And there we go, we're going to delete that. Now the best part is, I have come up with another blueprint. This giant train beam. And if I have this on blueprint mode, it'll connect right there. And then I can just connect these down so that they look like they are structurally sound. And everything works. That looks amazing. So of course, now that you got your simple pattern that you want to do, what you want to do is you just go around and you just make yourself one giant foundation long, and then you just kind of go around, just delete everything that you have in between, so ten at a time, makes it nice and easy because you got a repeatable pattern. Delete it, grab the foundation or the blueprint or whatever, build that down, and then you're just going to connect things all the way. It is, well, it's, it's pretty simple. And voila, a nice long train line. But we're going to have to learn how to curve things. And that part is actually a lot easier than you would think. Let me extend this out a little bit further and get to a part where I need to curve. All right, now I want to do a curve. I want to actually get this going south so I can go west. And the best way to do that is, I found that if I just go out two, then I turn this, I can go out three. So that is the curve. Now the reason I did it like this, where I went up against this one and just went 45 degree angle, is because one way, I have it set going west, south, north, east, all that stuff, and the other one is going like southeast, southwest, west north, all that kind of stuff. So that is a simplistic way of doing it. But if you wanted to, you can actually just kind of turn it. Like if you hold control, you can actually just rotate it with the mouse wheel however you want it. So if you only want it like a couple degrees or whatever like that, you don't want to go full 45 degree angle, then you can do it that way, which works out really well. But I like to try to keep this at the beautiful 45 degree angle. Is it 45? Yeah, 45 degree angle going forward. Then I will build this one out here. Going right there. Build you out. So we have 11. And this part I found is key. So what I'll do is, and the reason why I have these 10 is in case I have to go a little bit extra. So we're going here. I go all the way to the edge. Then I go to this one, come over here, and then I go all the way to the edge. And then these two I will delete and I will go all the way to the edge with these two as well. Now I know it might seem like what would be the point? Well, if you're in the middle and you start doing the curve, uh, it kind of clips into these things, which I don't like. I really don't like the clipping, so I like to do this because even on the small one, it curves perfectly. And by perfectly, I mean there's a gap in here for some odd reason. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. It, it's just it's just in there. It's there now. It's a thing. So, you know, I get to deal with it. But everything else is perfect. It's good. So now it curves over and I can go south. And then I can put myself a roundabout. And I'll show you a roundabout once I make it all the way over there. Alright, it is time for a roundabout. And why would we put a roundabout in there? For reasons. So what I did was, I went 10, like I normally did with those. And then I want to pick which direction I want to go to. So if I want to go west, I'm going to go west. Alright? But if I wanted to go a different direction, I would go that way. Then what I want to do is I want to delete all the way up to 10. And that is where the other one is going to be. So we'll put you right here. There we go. And now going forward, we're going to do things a little bit different going over here. But let's start with the roundabout first. Now, of course, I made myself a beautiful little blueprint for a nice roundabout. Unfortunately, it only goes so far. And it's a little hard to place because, well, it just doesn't want to place it. Ah, there we go. 
So this is the base of the roundabout. It's got the extensions. It's got like three, four different layers up here and then double kind of thing up there. It is kind of really fancy. Essentially, it's just kind of both of those merged together, but it's got it at a 45 degree angle. So as you can see, uh, eight of them. So we have eight different directions on the top and this is going to be good. So what you want to do is you want to come and take the ramp and then we're just going to extend the ramp the other way going back up. Now this is mostly just for aesthetics, but it also helps us really well because then we can go with the one meter, one meter, and we can do this going all the way around. So now we'll have a flat surface that is, I want to say three away from the center. And we'll double check in just a second. I know, shouldn't I know this like by heart? Nope. I made this thing. I made sure it was right the first time and I haven't had to worry about it since. And then we build one meter inverted ramp and then we switch to the two meter inverted ramp and everything just looks fancy. And if only I had a blueprint that was big enough to allow me to build all this out this way to begin with, I wouldn't have to do this. But alas, the blueprint machine is only so big. And then I changed the color, because why not? You know, I want it to be uniform, I don't want it to look weird. And there we go. So this is my roundabout. And we can tell it goes from here, one, two, three. So one, two, three, and then the center part. And this is very important because what you want to do is you want to take two foundations, put them out this way grab your railway right here in the center and right here now you're making a straight piece because once you click this one you can actually go to this part in the middle and it starts to curve and this is going to be really great because not only will we make a nice uh, beautiful little circle but we also give ourselves some connecting points now I showed this off in the last video how exactly this works but I'm going to show it off again. Oh, next thing I want to do is for the roundabout, even though there's 10 in the middle, I don't want to go 10. So I'm going to go 5, and then I'm going to go 5, and then I'm going to build my nice blueprint again. Because we love the blueprints. It really does help building stuff like this, like infrastructure and whatnot. Then I want to go all the way to the edge, because there are certain things that I'll go to the edge for and this is one of them and then this one yep we're gonna do the same thing you called it right to the edge clip it all the way to the edge now this next part doesn't really matter how you want to do it but I like to do it with the left side hitting the 45 degree angle and then the right side is going to hit the 90 degree angle right here now I would love if it allowed me just like clip it right there, but <laughs> oh, that'd be too easy, but no. So now we're gonna have to go to this one, which is great because we can have four intersections here because there's eight total and we have two per each one. We can have four different directions going into one small roundabout, which is awesome because it is one small roundabout. All right, let me take a breath for a second. Now let me explain why would we do a roundabout? What would be the purpose of this? Well, first of all, when a train comes, if it has to turn around, if this is a huge link system around the whole map, it's gonna have to go around the whole map, which is garbage. So by putting roundabouts, it's able to come over here, turn around and go back the way it came. Great. Other things that are great for the roundabout, instead of having this crossing over, is it actually is more fluid. For some reason and I think if I wanted to let me check I might be able to put path signals instead of block signals because the path signal I think it does something with uh what is it um let's see no n path signal there we go Wait, it just lets me pull it? I thought it would give me information. Which one's the information one? Is that O? Oh, oh. Path, oh, I should probably type in that correctly. Path, path signal. 
Uh, train signals are used to direct the movement of the train, avoid collision and bottleneck. Path signals are advanced signals that are especially used for bi-directional railway and complex intersections. So I'm thinking that if I put them here, it might be able to let like two or more trains actually go. So like if one's going this way and it needs to go around, that one's going this way so they don't connect or whatever. Who knows? But I always do block signals because, you know, it's just it's just easier to understand. It's easier to use. So those are the major things. Now this right here, I want to actually show you this. What I do is I take a double ramp, put it over the edge, and then I'll go up nine. And then I will put a regular foundation there, and then I will do the same thing. So this is what I do for any... Uh, elevation so if I want this to elevate and get higher this is what I'm gonna have to do and I want to do that because this line right here it needs to go above this thing because I can't destroy that right cluster go dang it yep see it doesn't let me destroy it unfortunately so I'm gonna have to go above it so that is how I do that, and then of course I just build my beautiful little train tracks that go straight right on top of here, right on top of here, and grab my lines. Then we do a few lines, it goes down, granted not as smooth as I would hope it would be, but also not that bad. <laughs> So yeah, those are going to go down and then go up and then voila, I'm over it. Then, then we're going to get over there and we're going to have to figure out a way to build a spiral. The spiral one is it's probably what a lot of you came here to look for and it's going to be interesting. But first, let me build my line going down there so I have a place to start. Alright, so it's time to go vertical with this and uh, step number one is we're going to have to clear a little bit of the area. So uh, these cluster noblest, by the way, work fantastically at cleaning out that kind of stuff. But once it's cleared out to your heart's content, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab a foundation and we're going to go to the half foundation and we're going to turn it sideways and we're going to go over to and then we're going to go on the other one half foundation and we're going to go over two. Then I built myself a another blueprint. This one, uh, this one is fun. It's just kind of weird looking if you look at it, but if I connect it right here and I connect it right here, this is going to work perfectly. The idea behind these is this is going to create spirals. So all it is is just a foundation and then a two meter one, a one meter one, another one meter one, a one meter one, and a two meter one. And the best part about it is, it is a repeatable pattern, so I can go up yet again, go up yet again. And the idea behind it is, you take these half foundations, you go over to the edge, you zoop it too. Go over to the edge, you zoop it too. And you basically make the spiral that you want, depending on how you want it. So this is going this way, so this one's going to go over and around. This one, on the other hand, we want it to go the other way. So this is why I just didn't make two different blueprints, because I could just use this versatility, versatilely, versatilely, you know, all that stuff. Then I'm going to grab a regular one meter foundation, and let's just default it, because that's going to be so much better. And then bam, bam, bam. And then default it, default it, and default it. Now we need one other thing. So uh, I'm pressing my double ramp. I need a single ramp, but I want to use the same material that I have. So if this is going up, I want this to go right here. So basically it's going to hit this and go up. And this one's going to go up. And then this one's going to go up. And this one's going to go up, but the other way. Look at that. That's amazing. And then voila, it's going up. And then I can take my railway, click it, and then click right here in the middle. And this is why we use the ramp, because if you use the ramp, it actually goes up. Like, it curves up, so it'll be much smoother once it goes from each one. 
Whereas if you do not click the ramp and you just go flat on it, you know what, I can show you so that you don't have to do the mistake I did at the beginning. So look, I put it there and it's like, okay, so that's not too bad, right? And then I do this and it's like, oh my God, this is, this is easy. Why didn't I just do this? And then just, just look how wonky that looks and then just look how pristine that looks. Yeah, so some people might not want to put that there, which is fine. It's your choice. It's your build. Build how you want it. But I find that this is very nice and very helpful. So as you can see, it spirals up and then all I got to do is just build it to whatever height I desire. And when I'm done, I can just take a piece, put it on the top. If I hold control, I can get it right in the middle. And then I can put this right on top and then have it come over and do the one so it's right back in the middle. But I want to go, I'm thinking a little bit higher. See, this is the problem. Like, yeah, sure, some of these you're just going to be able to build them, no problem. But then, then we got to figure out exactly how to go. <laughs> this one might be a little bit trickier than some of the other ones. Uh, that is, that is not a good look. <laughs> uh, I wish I could unsee that now. I can't. But if I want to, I can get this up and then probably go here and then maybe go up again. If I turn this at a, well, 45 degree angle. No, I'll have to turn it at a different angle towards the hood. But let me build this up a little bit and I'll show you where it's done. Boy, howdy. Look at this. It's all the way up there. Yes, and I even put one of these in the center. And there's a reason for that, because I want this center part to be nice and sturdy. I deleted the stuff that was down here, so all this little bit that's right here. And I built one on the top. And the general idea is all I have to do is take one of these train beams. And let's see, how well does this work? Oh, is that perfect? Oh, is that perfect? Oh, it's like two in there. Oh, I can live with that. That is amazing. So that is going all the way there and holding it up. And now the only thing I want to do is I want to take one of these and underneath we will not vertical, but default. Just so it kind of looks like it's holding it together. There we go. So this is my train spiral. Oh yeah, I moved it from over here because uh, turning it. I have to turn it, so yeah. Oh, and then for down here, all I did was I just took a two meter one going on the edge and I just went straight down and then just alternated every single one. You know, no, nothing special, but as you can see, it holds up quite nicely, looks amazing, and the double helix pattern is phenomenal. Now the only thing is, it has to go across here, and sure, I can make more of these extensions going across, but some of those would probably just look garbage. <laughs> so I gotta figure out another thing to do over here. And then of course, I gotta figure out how to get it down. But that is a problem that I need to figure out separately. The other thing I want to know is, please leave in the comments, do you have any idea of what I can put on the edge right here? Something on the top to kind of top it off. Otherwise, it's just kind of meh. I know with the power, I'm going to have the power come in and I'm just going to put like a power pole in the middle or something like that. You know, something crazy. But other than that, that is spirals. All right, so the last thing I wanna to do to finish off this video is go over block signaling. Now, the way that I do block signaling is I have everything facing on the right. So this one, instead of putting on the edge right here, I'm gonna put this right here and right here. Cause I know a lot of people are gonna ask the question, they're gonna be like, well, what do you do for block signaling? Especially if you're gonna have a lot of trains. So the general idea is to have something like this. So it's gonna be blocked off and then we'll do the same thing on this one right here. And then you right here. Okay, so this middle part's red, each one is done. So that way this roundabout, it's its own separate system. But if I had stuff coming over here, I would probably, let's see, if we grab a train, the average train that I'm gonna have is going to be one and then it's going to be one, where is it? two, 
three, and four. So that's going to be the average string, which is great because it fits perfectly right there. So if I had a block signal, I could literally put one at every single one of these. So leading up to here, so like leading up to the roundabout, they could stop at each one and then they wouldn't be too bad. And then that way there's enough room in between each one and it works out perfectly. All right, let's grab the train and get rid of the train. So a normal train would be about five high. And then of course, wait, I have it on the right way, yep. Oh yeah, because there's no outlet. So basically what I would do is I would probably go and I would just kind of just break up each one. And the best part about this is now as trains go down, they don't clip over anything and they work perfectly going around. So yeah, although this is tedious and takes a lot of resources, this is more of a fail safe measure. Now something like this though, if it's going up, I don't want it to stop. I'm okay with it stopping going down, but going up, no. I would skip that one and this one, and then I would have one here. And then of course you go in here. So now when the train goes up, it goes up and stops up here if it has to stop. Because if it stops like right here, it might go backwards and might cause an accident. So you definitely got to be cognizant of where you want it to stop. Like, do I want it to stop on this bridge? No. But if it has to, it's going to. Ooh, look how fancy this is. And then, of course, something like this where it turns, I can leave those two together and kind of put one right here. And then we'll go around the bend and we'll do it the other way. So, yeah, you want to put block... I, I mean, block signaling, you can just put them everywhere and it really helps out. I mean, I don't understand somebody that just kind of wants to do like the bare minimum. These things are, uh, they're not too expensive considering everything else that you're building. So, you know, go for it and go big. Oh, another thing is I did put a line of power going through here just for the lights. I don't know if this will be my main power because most of the power goes through the railway. And with the update eight where they have all those new uh, lines going everywhere. So I'm going to have to look into that before I build it. <sighs> then the only other thing I can say is just, you know, look at it, find places where you think roundabouts would work out well, like maybe a roundabout right here would work out great getting into this area, especially with whatever you're going to decide, and then just go from there. Another thing you might have noticed is I did not put the edge or the bottom piece on each one of these. That's because I'm planning out some factories, and what I'm going to do is if a factory connects to the line, uh, what I want to do is I want to actually delete the bottom parts, like this part right here, and connect it to each and every factory. So, you know, that's I just kind of left them the way they are, and then just build them from there. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is my video. So if you enjoyed yourself, I mean, there's things you might be able to do. I mean, you enjoyed yourself, so that's the most important part. But this has been fun. I can't wait to continue building out on this one because I'm going to rebuild all that other lovely stuff that I had, such as the smelting place. What was it called? Melting point. Uh, and then I got a couple really good ones before I start building major power. And this time, I'm going to show you how I did it. A little bit like how I did the train lines right here. I'm going to show you some of the basic stuff. So, you know, not just kind of be on my own or not be on your own or whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Nice. Nailed it. So anyway, have a lovely day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can tell me about it, whatever YouTube stuff people like to say. But other than that, I have to finish the train line. It's not complete all the way, so I have work to do. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, keep building and show me how it's done. <laughs> Bye, buddy.